I'm Jeff Cole. Welcome to our Fox 29 political special. Today, we'll speak to State Senator Sharif Street. He's also the chairman of the Democratic Party in Pennsylvania. We'll talk about the debate. His economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. The campaign and the weeks ahead leading up to Election Day. Later, we'll talk to Republican State Representative from Northeast Philadelphia, Martina White. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. We'll talk to Ms. White about this debate, about the campaign, how Republican Donald Trump is doing, and some issues as well. But first, State Senator Sharif Street. Senator Sharif Street, thanks very much for joining us. Glad to be here with you. We're recording the uh, morning, the afternoon, actually, after the debate. What's your view of what happened last night, Harris and Trump? Well, look, I think um, uh, Vice President Harris laid out her vision for the country, and uh, <laughs> Donald Trump was uh, amusing. Um, he said all kinds of things from... Uh, the pandemic about people eating cats and dogs to uh, he made a pitch about his uh, crowd size. Um, I don't think he really spoke to issues that uh, people were concerned about. And I think that there just showed a, a real contrast between someone who's serious and someone who's not. You said she has uh, a lot of work to do or more work to do. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where does she need to work? On, on what issues? Well, I was talking about work with the people who haven't been tuned into politics. They, I don't think, I, I think she's just got to introduce herself. I think she's doing that. I think she's telling them about um, what she stands for. We're seeing people who are um, who, weren't, who aren't normally engaged in politics getting engaged. And I think that's the kind of thing you want from a campaign. Do you believe the race is as tight as the polls indicate? That it's a couple of points? She's got maybe two-point well, lead here? I believe that the race is tight enough that I don't want to I don't want to take anything for granted we got to push through look there is a huge chunk of um, Pennsylvania voters that are going to vote for Donald Trump wow. they're gonna vote for Donald Trump if he told them he likes to eat dogs um, and uh, we have to be we have to understand that but what but that's about 45 to 47 percent of the people that doesn't win it um, there are a lot of reasonable people uh, Republicans independents and sent and, and moderate Democrats who I think ultimately are going to break for, for Vice President Harris and she'll win the state. But we have to continue to do work. And the second thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we keep um, people who are normally reliable Democratic voters engaged and involved so that our, our turnout is where it needs to be. In, in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, in largely rural communities, a woman absolutely. of color, left-leaning, can she drive down his numbers in some of those communities? Well, look, um, I absolutely think she can. There are people, believe it or not, in Pennsylvania, we have something that we talk about, the state party, call, talk uh, called the Obama Trump voter. Now, I know that sounds odd, but there are a significant number of voters we've identified on the profile that voted for Barack Obama both times he ran hmm. and in 2016 voted for Donald Trump. We got a lot of those voters back in 2020, but there is there are a lot of talk in internal meetings about the Obama Trump voter. Um, it seems an enigma to people, but they exist and they exist in significant percentages in rural Pennsylvania. What's the connection there? How, uh, how do you vote for Barack Obama? <laughs> And Donald Trump. Well, let me say this. We, I'm not going to say we've cracked the code about why right. that happened, but it did happen. Yeah. We know that, and it didn't happen like, not, we're not talking about one offs. Right. We're talking about a significant percentage of the electorate in rural Pennsylvania voted for Obama twice, not once, but also voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. What we think some of it is, they represented change. Um, Obama represented change for those people. Um, Trump represented change. Neither of them, they didn't believe that they were part of the establishment. Um, and then they came there, and most importantly, they came there and talked to them. And uh, by, when Joe Biden went there, he got a lot of those people back. And uh, we're, that's why Kamala Harris is out there talking to him. We believe we can get them back. Tell me the role of race. What does the role of race play in this election? Well, you know what? I think it's evolving in, uh, in America. One, um, I think it, it represents... Um, hope for a lot of people who are left out, particularly the South Asian community. I've seen an ext and a tremendous amount of enthusiasm because hmm. she will be the first South Asian president. Hmm. Um, in the African American community, it shows that Barack was not an anomaly. There are parts of the white community that wanted that want to know that are like the idea that we are, as a country are moving past our racist past. And so for many of those people, that's what it represents. We'll be right back with Democratic State Chair Sharif Street in a moment. We continue our discussion now with Philadelphia State Senator Sharif Street. You supportive of the uh, Sixers basketball arena in the uh, Market East neighborhood of this city? Well, look, I haven't looked at all the proposals, but I think building an arena is a great thing. 
Yeah, okay, but <laughs> having sure, a building it almost anywhere is a pretty good thing. But it, you know, we know on Market well, East, on the on the on the from what neighborhood I, from near what I, Chinatown. From what I've seen of it, it's gonna it would be good for the city. You think it would be good for a city? From what I've seen of it, well, what I, you look, seen I haven't. And it's I not understand. before the state legislature, sure. so I haven't seen the details. But I, what I've seen of it looks pretty good for the but city. But you you know that the residents of Chinatown, even though it's not yeah. in Chinatown, it's in the edge of Chinatown. The residents of Chinatown. Community groups are absolutely opposed and believe it threatens their culture, threatens their neighborhood. Look, I, I believe that uh, there are some groups that are that are opposition that is certainly vocal. We need to be sensitive to that and look at that and how it ever moves forward. I also believe that the uh, in council prerogative and the General Assembly shouldn't make those decisions for council, so I want to be careful about Understand. stepping on the toes of council and the mayor. I think it can be done in a way that is respectful of Chinatown. There are many businesses in Chinatown that are supportive because it could it could enhance those businesses. Mm -hmm. It's just got to be done in a way that respects those folks' concern. And I'm glad that they are expressing their concerns because when you build a stadium, you need to get it right. Why is SEPTA now in a position to have to raise fares, it says, just to survive and keep on going here? Well, look, um, one is because the General Assembly, where I serve, failed. Right. We failed SEPTA. Um, but we haven't irreconcilably failed SEPTA. Um, there's an opportunity for us to still pass um, legislation in the fall uh, that would uh, stop rate fares from actually having to go in effect. SEPTA must announce rate fares. Sure. Uh, I think in advance. In advance of actually doing them. The, we have been told, I've been told by SEPTA, that there's still a, a, an opportunity for the state to step in and, and uh, give them the resources they need so that the rate fares don't actually happen. But they had to announce them because if they didn't announce them, then they would have had to wait so long that they would have had to have uh, service shutdowns. So look, I think that the SEPTA fare shouldn't increase. I think we need to pass legislation. Uh, it has been tied by my Republican colleagues for uh, to, uh, to legislation around small, uh, le legalizing small games of chance and regulating those games. I can support that legislation. I'll go on record saying hmm. I think their proposal is not unreasonable. I went to Republican leadership and said, I'll, pro I'll vote for your proposal today to get SEPTA funding done. But they had some unreadiness in their caucus as to what the language should be and they said we hear you we're going to get this done i believe there will there will be a bipartisan coalition uh, this month to get septa funding done Bro, what's your relationship with josh shapiro likes these days now it's i mean now this is this is old history here but he 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 wasn't in favor of you becoming the Democratic state chair, correct? He had somebody else in mind that he liked. Yeah, Josh and I have a great relationship, and I remind folks, John Street wasn't in favor of me when I ran for state rep the first time. I got a good relationship with him, too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be your father, I think, That right? is correct. Do, do you think that Kamala Harris should have taken taken Josh Shapiro. You said to me that if you win Pennsylvania, you win the presidency. She takes Josh Shapiro. She likely wins the uh, Look, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I think Tim Walls is doing a great job. Um, I, I've said it clear. It would have made my job easier in Pennsylvania if you picked Josh. I, I still believe that. Uh, but I think Tim Walls has been a great choice. She's got to look at the whole country. She's got 50 states to win, and yes, we need to win Pennsylvania. We also need to win Michigan. We also need to win Wisconsin. She's got a chance to win Georgia. She's got a chance to win Arizona, Nevada. I'm, I'm responsible for one state. I'll tell you what, there's nobody that you could have picked in America that does more help in Pennsylvania than Josh Shapiro. But she's got the whole country. Got I'm it. only responsible for one Last state. Last question I have for you. How come we can't legalize? How come you can't get legalized pot done? <laughs> And you very much want to do it. I do. Shapiro said he wanted to do it. It doesn't look like it's ever going to happen here. Uh, look, I think recently. it's going to happen. Um, uh, the delays are baffling to me. I normally have good answers, but I'll tell you this. I think it's happening. Almost three-quarters of Republicans and Democrats wanted to get done. When you talk to people behind the scenes, they want to get done. But when I started on, when my uncle, uh, the late, great Milton Street, first introduced it in the 80s, they, there were the, the papers printed, there was not an ounce of support for Milton Street's marijuana bill. Now there's overwhelming support in Democratic circles. There are sponsors in all four caucuses, Republicans in the House and Senate. We're getting close. Joining us now, Republican State Representative from the 170th District from Northeast Philadelphia, Martina White. We're recording on the Wednesday after the Tuesday night debate. You obviously watched uh, a good amount of that. What'd you think? I did. I was uh, really unimpressed, I would say, overall. 
I think that the people of across America and here in Pennsylvania are still asking more questions and not having gotten enough answers out of the debate. Hmm. Unimpressed with both candidates? Unimpressed with Harris, with Trump? How, how are you I unimpressed? I think overall on the issues and mm -hmm. the questions that were asked, um, I think we really needed to hear more about the issues that are facing Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, like violent crime, education, uh, energy policy would have been great avenue to uh, talk about how inflation is impacting people, whether it be their groceries, gas, or um, you know their energy bills, and how uh, unleashing Pennsylvania energy could be a solution to the to that issue. Interesting. I mean, the, certainly the issue of inflation came up. Trump spoke to it a little bit was did he not work as hard on it that you think I mean that would certainly be an opening that um, you think he could bring against uh, Kamala Harris so I think you know I mean we were diving right into the issue I guess here in, um, on my part but I think overall that the former president we know a lot about him already right, right. We, we we didn't know a whole lot about Kamala going into this debate uh, we know that president was a peacetime president. There were no new wars or uh, big types of conflicts that occurred under his administration. Mm -hmm. He was able to close down the border, make sure that illegal immigrants weren't coming across, uh, unlike what is happening under the Biden and Harris administration. And um, he even helped to get these opportunity zones set up for our uh, you know, communities that are low income and need the extra help, uh, which have really helped bolster uh, local economic impacts here in Philadelphia uh, for black and Latino communities. Speak about violent crime as a campaign issue. Where can the president speak to that in a way that it's going to appeal and be real to uh, folks? Sure. Well, when you look at uh, what Kamala Harris stands for, right, she is a prosecutor and she's a person who has been very progressive in her viewpoints on many issues, including uh, advocating and going and raising money to get more dollars to bail out violent criminals mm -hmm. who uh, are reoffenders that went out, rioted, looted, and, uh, you know, basically burned down our cities. Mm -hmm. um, she, you know, I think needs to work on that issue for herself because standing with a defund the police movement of the, you know, that is not what Philadelphia needs. We need strong leadership, people who are going to hold uh, those criminal elements accountable for their actions. You said that it seemed like uh, he took the bait for some and didn't take the bait for others. Were you disappointed that he took the bait at all? I would imagine. Well, I mean, if that gets sure. in the way of if that gets in the way of sort of issues discussion. Like I think for Kamala, she prepared for a debate, hmm. but I don't think that she uh, is trusted to handle the economy even after it, and I don't think that uh, she is prepared to lead the country. We needed to see more from from this actual debate, and that's why I think there needs to be another one. I don't think we'll get one, yeah. but uh, why, we'll. Why see. don't you think we'll get one? I think it's because uh, mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania. We start voting, uh, I think, on Monday. Sure. So uh, I doubt that we'll we'll see one hmm. before the election. Let me ask you: What's your position on abortion uh, and reproductive rights? Sure. Um, so obviously. Last night, we saw that the president was very specific. He said that we are not banning abortions. Mm -hmm. And to kind of get that thought out of your mind, because what's happening is um, the, poli the political arena is really just using it as a fear tactic to garner support. And I think that's really a shame because it is an important issue for a lot of voters out there. For me in particular, and I think for a lot of people, what we have going on here in Pennsylvania. 24 weeks. Correct. So it's, it's a lot of people don't know what the current law is. Right. We are a commonwealth that allows for abortions up to 24 weeks. Anything beyond that, there are exceptions. We allow for exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother, health of the mother. Um, and none of that is going to change. We'll continue with Representative White in a moment. We're back again with Representative Martina White. The legislature has now approved yet another large dose of public funding into public education, uh, in, pushed in part by the Commonwealth's uh, court in uh, view in this case. What is your view of public education? Is the state where it should be? Should there be more? Should there be uh, an inclusion of some funding for private schools as well? Right now in Pennsylvania, we did. We have been placing billions and billions of dollars of the Commonwealth's taxpayer 
money into public education all across our state. We have also been, in particular me, been advocating for more school choice. Even though after all of those dollars being put into the public education system, we are still not seeing improvement and results that our constituents, our children, deserve. When you look at Philadelphia's schools, this whole school district, right? If you are unable to read by the time you're out of third grade, you're very likely to struggle for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. For third graders, it's about 30% who are at reading grade level. And to me, that number is unacceptable. What we have to do here in Pennsylvania is allow for more children to get access and their parents to be able to access the school of their choice that will work best for their family to get them the quality education that they deserve. Do you think the state is where it should be on gun regulation. I know I've heard you make arguments before that the state needs to, prosecutors need to. Do you see any tinkering with gun laws that may help this in any way? Look, we, we've seen a little bit of a decline yeah, in okay. the murder or like homicides shootings as well as murders, shootings, correct. Right. Um, but they're still high, yes. like way too high right. for any major city in, in the nation. And um, a lot of these crimes involve an illegal firearm. Right. So they're already, these individuals are already not supposed to have a firearm to begin with. They're typically felons or re, you reoffenders. Know, re mm -hmm. And those are the individuals who are 30% more likely to commit a violent crime. Okay, those who are carrying an e illegal firearm. Right. For me, it's about making sure that not only do the arrests happen, which we know are taking place, because those are sky high, right? but that the prosecutor like Larry Krasner, and unfortunately, like I said earlier, Kamala Harris is comparable in my opinion in terms of radical uh, progressive mm -hmm. movement issue on when it comes to crime. SEPTA is raising its fares mm -hmm. because it hasn't got the, 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 the funding that the legislature no. would normally give it. What's happened? Where is that? That's right. Uh, it's kind of become a uh, an issue that I feel like no one's really vying for it at the mm -hmm. moment. Uh, the governor says able, he will. The well, governor he says that he will, but it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened, mm -hmm. so it just goes to the effectiveness, I think, of this administration. This is not an option. It has to happen, and we have to find a path forward to get it done. Speak a little bit about energy then in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, how prices sure. can be lowered and there can be more access uh, to quality energy at a lower price. I think it would have been a great opportunity for us to, or for either candidate, to tout the fact that if we were to unleash Pennsylvania's natural gas, to unleash the energy, uh, natural resources that we have right under our own feet, to be able to make sure that we have clean, affordable, and reliable energy, um, it's, it's really a no-brainer. But unfortunately, when you have Kamala Harris saying, oh, we're going to ban fracking, um, how, how does 300,000 some odd people who work in the natural gas industry in Pennsylvania, how, how are they supposed to take that? You know, I, I, I you think know that's she's a major, her position well, she, so now. she has claimed to have changed her position, but the actions, the actions of the Biden Harris administration indicate otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. They banned out new LNG licenses to be for exporting. And that's where the real problem comes in because we need to make sure that our grid, our electric grid, that we, we, when we go to turn on the light switch, that it actually, the lights come on. And when they keep pushing the, you know, oh, we can rely on solar and we can rely on wind. It's like, okay, but those are intermittent sources of energy. We need, we need reliable energy. Our natural gas here in Pennsylvania, um, when it gets un, unleashed, I think we can become a real powerhouse and we'd be unstoppable when it comes to our national security or even locally making sure we do have clean reliable and affordable energy well thanks for joining us on our fox 29 political program we'd like to thank senator sharif street and state representative martina white stay with fox 29 for more political coverage and more political programming just like this i'm jeff cole